Hitler. Anyway, uh, so um, for a longtime listener, there are things that I say that, uh, and I usually tell you that I feel prompted to tell you, uh, and they're usually the things that I don't want to tell you, uh, like, uh, hurry, you should be where, you know, you want to be because there's coming a time where you are where you are and you're not going to move. Um, but uh, uh, every year we just look at the news and we say, okay, without prompting, just what is it that we think the trends are showing us? So let's go over this time last year. These are the things that I said would happen in 2022. Stu, you be the judge. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, COVID-19 just sort of fades away. Despite the best efforts of government, authorities, and the Davos crowd to keep the pandemic going forever, the reality of herd immunity plus vaccinations plus therapeutic treatments will ensure that both infections as well as hospitalizations will decline dramatically in 2021 and uh, COVID-19 will fade into the background, very much moving into an endemic phase in 2022. Um, for the most part, the pandemic will fade into a bad, muddy memory, like the way a nightmare can fade into just an unpleasant feeling for a couple of hours after you wake up from it. Mm, I mean, I think that's exactly what happened, okay. right? Do you? I, mean, I think that's... Yeah, I think the only thing that I missed here was uh, that it was going to start really turning... Right now, I think in 2023, by the uh, by the end of this coming year, and I'm going to get into my predictions uh, next week for this year, but I think uh, this is the year where it really starts to turn ugly and flips the other way. It, what do you mean? <clears throat> you say you're saying like a flaring back like up? Like right COVID? now, right now, I think there is this feeling in America that – uh, those vaccines were not so good, even though even the oh, people, right. even from the people who took the vaccine, they're like uh, starting to question it. I think it's going to turn ugly the other direction, um, you know, against the vaccines and against the hmm. people. We'll see on that one. I think the uh, your the prediction of it fading away though seems really exact to me. I mean, yeah, I, it I, is. I was just glancing at the stats, which I have, I don't you know pull up all that often anymore, and that's a yeah. good sign, right? Of it, right? That, uh, that that what you said is true, and I think like it's to the point now where it's hard to really remember that that 2020 era where like you were. You know, yeah, it was like everything. Everything was locked down, everything. or like you know, you were wearing masks everywhere. Yeah. It just seems like a bizarre memory from yeah, our past. It does. So that one seems exactly right. Uh, then the next one was wars and rumors of wars. Whether it's Russia invading the Ukraine, ding ding ding, ding <laughs> or China invading Taiwan or another Iranian caused blow up in the Middle East, 2022 is likely to see uh, one or more wars of the words. Uh, from 2021 erupting into a shooting war in 22. First one I put was <laughs> yeah. Russia versus Ukraine. Tremendous amount of digital ink has been poured into discussions of Putin's desire to protect Russia's so-called soft underbelly from threats within the EU, EU. This narrative relies on World War II era geopolitics and reasoning. The reality is there's currently zero countries that represent even a cursory threat to Russian territory. The answer to the question of why is Russia being so aggressive towards Ukraine is much simpler, and it is often the case when it comes to Putin's political motivations. It's entirely financial. Uh, this one is based on commodities. Ukraine is rich in oil, natural gas, and rare earth minerals. I uh, go into the energy thing and that they need to be able to have open pipelines set right to Europe, yada, yada, and that they would uh, invade and it would be most likely that we would get into uh, get involved in a shooting war in Ukraine. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> newsflash, that one happened. Right. Uh, the next one I said was China versus Ukraine. Uh, sorry, China versus Taiwan. It would seem almost laughable just a few years ago that China would even entertain the idea of a military intervention in Taiwan. However, chi uh, China may have a unique opportunity in 2022 that the world is massively distracted and distanced from Taiwan because what will happen in Ukraine and Russia? 
And I, that one obviously did not happen. However, Correct. it does seem like it's on the docket. Yeah, <laughs> it know? is on the docket. I mean, you know, a year ago, that was, we weren't in Ukraine. They weren't in Ukraine. Right. This does um, the Ukraine thing sets off a series of events that yes, can easily lead to correct. something like this. Um, war on crypto. See what you think of this one. Uh, in 2022, central banks and government authorities will move into an active mode against cryptocurrencies, most likely using some eye-catching headlines about protecting consumers. But to successfully use that approach, authorities need an event: a major crime syndicate using crypto. A massive crypto exchange theft in, uh, uh, affecting investors. <laughs> wow, this is this is written before 2022, right? This is 2021. Yeah, this is, you wrote these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, suddenly, crypto <laughs> will become a bad guy thing. Something that government needs to step in and protect us mm. from. First, we'll see laws that make owning or transacting with cryptocurrencies illegal, and that'll be enough for most people, especially because central banks will be launching their own digital currencies as a safe replacement, one of the co- uh, one that is, of course, tracked by Uncle Sam. Now, that, all of that yeah. didn't happen, but... Well, you got the S- uh, SBF, <laughs> yeah. FTX thing. Yeah. So that was the the mm. the event, right? And that happened late enough in the year that they're not Here's into a- deep legislation yet. But right. you, they are talking about it coming. And th- one of my predictions uh, coming for next year is uh, it, it, we are going to have massive – well, I, I won't tell you, but – Cryptocurrency uh, and uh, central bank currency is coming. Uh, but what, here's what I said. In 2022, central banks and government authorities will move into active mode against cryptocurrencies uh, based on eye-catching headlines about protecting consumers. I, I think that's accurate. Sure. I mean, that, I mean uh, that one is well underway yeah. uh, of completing. Uh, the next one I said, market crash ahead. Uh, global equities experienced uh, significant sell-offs in Q1 of 2019, Q2, uh, Q1 of 2020. While COVID-19 got the blame for the sell-off, similar sell-off in early 2019 had no apparent cause. From April 2020 to February 21, the Fed made more than $9 trillion of loans to the largest investment banks in the U.S. And that's on top of the trillions of other stimulus in Fed or Uncle Sam currency printing that saw trillions more enter the economy over that time. Consumer price inflation is virtually guaranteed at the (laughs) level four to six months from now. So 2022 will be a choice between inflation, a market crash, or deflation during an election year. They say elections have consequences, but uh, likewise, consequences have elections. Given the probable consequence of a no-good choice place, talking about the Fed, uh, and what are they going to do? Keep raising up the rates? Are they going to let it crash, et cetera, et cetera? Um, I predicted a crash. I don't think we got, you know, we didn't get a crash, but we did see uh, a significant weakening of the market uh, because of the Fed. I think I got this one really wrong uh, because the idea here is this will be one more reason to sell your stock in the DNC's changes in 2022 because I said it would also at the end of 2022 have uh, significant consequences in the election, which, uh, no. Mm, Well, yeah, it did have, I mean, certainly changed the balance of power, which was significant, I think. Uh, And it did go down, certainly, in 2022. But I I wouldn't describe it as a crash. Yeah, I agree. Um, All right, um, more in just a second. Mm. So we're just going over the predictions uh, that I made for 2022 to see if they were right or wrong. So far, one was pretty wrong, but the rest of them were spot on. Wouldn't you think? Yeah, you think? I think so. I mean, I don't even. I mean, the 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 market calling it a crash is definitely wrong, but the yeah. tone of tone of the year was certainly negative. Yeah. So here's one absolutely wrong. Speaking of 2022 elections, it's hard to find a pundit or pollster at this point who is not forecasting a major red wave over the course of 2022 midterm elections. Given the Biden administration's insistence on supporting policies and programs wildly unpopular, uh, it's not going to be surprising. Voter enthusiasm for registered uh, Democratic voters have never been this low, blah, blah, blah. And I said it would be a major red wave Mm. uh, and then some. No. No. no, a little red trickle, maybe. Yeah, uh, you know, they get the House, which is 
if they ever get a speaker, will be will be important. And that is just so bizarre to me. That one still just doesn't make sense, other than the Republicans found a way to blow it. They didn't push their people into going out and voting early, et cetera, et cetera. They didn't use all of the legal things that you can use to be able to help at the polls. Everybody waited to the last uh, minute. And they just their strategy was, we're not the Democrats. That's not enough. It's not enough. Uh, listen to this one. The establishment begins to kill Musk. Talking about Elon Musk, the total outsider, rebel, completely unapologetic about what he's achieved. He's male. He's white. He doesn't apologize for that. These days, those things don't pass for unforgivable sins in the eyes of the woke elite. You might expect an, uh, an Ayn Rand type character emerging. The leftist elite just will not allow them to survive. Over the next year, we'll see a highly con concentrated effort to destroy Musk. His business, his reputation, his legal standing, and his wealth. For his mark, uh, for his part, Musk has promised to fly a Noah's Ark spacecraft to Mars, presumably including human beings two by two. But if we're reading the tea relieves right, he might wish to accelerate his planned mission. <laughs> that's, that's I don't know if you saw Elon Musk posting the other day. He's like, twelve months ago, I was person of the year. Yeah, like I mean, it really has been a fall, a fall from grace that is amazing and so quick you know he, even when he was saying hey i might move my factory to texas and I, you know I, I, he opened up the factory obviously before california wanted him to after covid and there was some you know the left got a little annoyed with him at times mm -hmm. then they've totally turned on the guy now <laughs> oh, the, guy, yeah. the guy who started the largest electric car company in history yeah they've totally turned on him oh yeah and they will they will destroy him i mean um i think he thinks he can push through this because he's so rich and powerful but man and I, he might maybe he might maybe but the 2023 will be the year mm. that we will find out try this one out man-made energy crisis will cripple europe this is before the invasion of ukraine right. mm -hmm. another of the climate emergency narrative driven realities will also rear its head in 2022 the results will be devastating to the economies of europe and to a lesser extent asia uh, further, the happiest man on the continent right now uh, will be Vladimir Putin, who will spend 2022 laughing all the way to the bank. I mean, I think that one was a little accurate mm. as well. Next week, uh, we will give you the predictions for 2023 on what is coming your way. Uh Hopefully they'll be happier. I don't think they're going to be because I'm the one writing them. But maybe I'll, maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe I'll be much, much more wrong. I, maybe I should start drinking again and then write the predictions. <laughs> Everything is great. I love you so much. And my predict it will be that way all year.